You're now listening to Ninth House, episode two, with Matt Karoshi and AJ Dotty. This is something new, and we're happy that you could join us today. And yeah, AJ, what's going on? You saying, man, you good? I'm decent out here, son. I'm decent. You know how it is. Fucking living Bartos, mate. Yeah. Living Bartos, mate. Fucking flying. Fucking flying. Sunny outside. It's all right. It's still all look, there. Your lips go again. <laughs> my days, I don't even have a list. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's something with your S's is going on yeah. still. But Boy. Yeah, what's been going on, AJ? How have you been? How's been life been treating you? Life's been good, man. Um, after my little trip in March, where I just needed some headspace. I forgot, obviously, today's episode is called En Route to Change. Oh, yeah. And you will kind of see the theme as the episode goes along. But yeah, continue. Sorry. Yeah, so uh, yeah, so I went away for a little bit, went to get my head right, just to sort of like um, get my goals, my mental state, and everything that like, evolved around me intact, like just sort of like feel all the things that I don't need, the things that I, that I needed in order to sort of get to the next level. Because I feel like everyone around me has been doing something, but around this time, I'm now looking to sort of, sort of like alter it and sort of, like, get to the next level, similar to what we're doing here now. Like, we've had a couple of years trying something. Well, it's been a year, not a couple, obviously. No, just like... in general, like, in, ge- in general with the people that I'm talking about. I'm not talking oh, about... okay, yeah, I'm yeah, just yeah. generalising, isn't it? But a lot of people have been doing something for, like, a number of years or a period of time, and now are starting to clock, clock the formula or are starting to sort of, like... Yeah, basically clock the formula, and then they're just now sort of, like... They're now sort of, like, you know putting things together and then creating a masterpiece, you know. Like Nip said, the victory lap. This is where we at. So I'm good, you know, getting my shit together. I heard that. What you saying? Um, I don't know, man. Today, I feel all right. It's been a... I don't know, it's been an odd week for me. I discovered some things about my sight. And I don't know, man. At first, yeah, it didn't sit well with me. Like, as the guy was telling me stuff, I was just like, so what's the solution? And th- they didn't really have solutions for me, I'll be honest with you. Doesn't sound new to me. Yeah, but obviously, you you expect, if you go hospital, what's our, you expect yeah. a solution in it, for let's real. be honest. Yeah. So, yeah. That's their job, right? Something like that. So, that happened to me. And I don't know, I've been dealing with that, but I think I'll be all right, man, like. Yeah, you'll live from. At the end of the day, you don't know that, to be fair, but at the end of the God day, <laughs> it's got to be done in there. I, I wish to see, at True. least through one eye. Mm. So, Sight is a blessing, man. Yeah. Damn. If I had that song that Joe Budden plays. Oh, uh, what? Um, yeah. <laughs> outstanding. Outstanding. You know, when I went to that interview, yeah, that girl was playing Outstanding. Sure. So I was all there vibing because it was running a joke, wasn't it? I was like, yeah. Dun, dun, dun. Hey. But yeah, man. Um, Good vibes, good vibes, good vibes. Should we get into it? Yeah, man. Let's get into it. All right, cool. Firstly, let's talk about some music. So this week, Coltrane dropped a single. Um, oh, Donny that made um, New Chain. New Chain, yeah. So he dropped a single um, called... Perfect timing featuring FKJ. Okay. Sounds very interesting. Um, I went back to listen to his previous work. So he dropped two tapes in 2018. Uh, correct me if I'm not pronouncing it right. To, to Serena. T-S-A-R-I-N-A. Let's just say Therese. Maybe the T silent. I don't know. And, and Boot. So Boot's on his seven track EP, LP, whatever you want to call it. And... To Serena, or to Serena, whatever it is, is a it's a natural full project. Enjoy, I enjoyed both thoroughly, both very good tapes, and I'm looking forward to what he's going to actually produce um, with his new tape this year. Um, having FKJ on is interesting still, and I feel like FKJ picks his artists very carefully. As you can see, he does a lot of work with Tom Mish, or he has done a lot of work with Tom Mish. Um, I'd like to see a collaboration with K. Tronado, though. That would be wavy. And obviously, he sees work with um, Cher Leah. Um, what's her name? Uh, something Faith. I've got a name. Lauren Faith, that's her name, yeah. 
Um, yeah, so I'm looking forward to that release. So that's one. Schoolboy Q, he announced his um, his um, the name of his tape. It's going to be called Crash Talk. It's going to release on the 26th of April. That's interesting because um, when I listened to his single, Num Num Juice, it sounded good, but I feel like visually it done a bit more for me. Like he had a couple of flaws in, in within that track that was cruddy, but it's Q, isn't it? That's what, that's, that's what Q vibes, that's what Q provides you. So um, I hope it's an upgrade to Blank Face. I like Blank Face, but I don't see myself going back to it as much as I... Um, much as I go back to like Oxymoron or something. Um, so I'm looking forward to that release. And finally, the most anticipated artist in the UK, Fresh Home, J Huss, Daily Duffy. Fire! That was fire. I can't lie to you, I watched it, it was all right. Yeah, was, okay, cool, okay, cool. Let me not even guess it. Like, the beat was amazing. He said a couple of things that I really like. Like, I like the fact that Jay Huss is so original. Like he can he can say what he wants to say. Like he like he's just uses slang that I hear. He's like East man just make up their own words. They just make their own words and he just makes sense when you hear it. Like when he talks about making it, doing a bay tease. Like if you're from East, you know what bay tease is. Yeah, but that's that's not bars. Nah, yeah, it's a bar still. You wouldn't know because you're not from East. But yeah. Nigga, where you at right now? Not in East. Exactly. But you wouldn't know. Anyway, so I'm looking forward to seeing what he is looking to release this year. I heard that Drake... I know what you're saying, innit? I, I listened to it. I watched the video. It was okay, innit? Um, I don't know, man. I feel like you've put too much hype behind it. I liked what he said in it in the sense of like when he was saying things, like he come out and then he just went away mm -hmm. to go work on himself. Yeah. And... The mentality of prison is still kind of mm. still in his mind a bit, so he has to find his his himself again in mm -hmm. a way. So it's, he wasn't just chatting to chat. I That's am what I liked. About yeah, him. I am hyping up. I'm not gonna lie. The content was good. Mm -hmm. I he's working with different producers now. Like um, so he's trying to diversify. Yeah. The beat does sound a bit J Five ish, but the but producers. Even, oh, um, so J Five produced the whole of common sense okay um but he has tsb and nige and nige is cold i know that for a fact i haven't heard tsb i haven't heard a lot of tsb but what they produce together for that beat that beat is just cruddy so it's, it sounds like that he will he's he's kind of changed like his life is kind of yeah, 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 yeah started yeah. a new chapter yeah, yeah yeah so it's interesting to hear what it's kind of even though it's not the same you know the kind of similarities in the way of um, what they were saying about Meek Mill, of like how his rapping, his substance and the content, mm -hmm. it kind of, it doesn't have to change, but they hope it does. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I'm kind of getting from Jay Ross. Yeah. yeah, man, it'll be interesting to see. Um, I saw, because I saw, obviously Drake brought him out for, um, brought him out during one of his tour dates in London. Yeah. And I saw a post where, there's rumours if they made a track together. And I don't know how that would sound. I don't really feel like that's that dramatic. It isn't, but I, I'm I'm curious on how it would actually sound. Because I don't... probably got tunes with bare people. Yeah, I like them. just studio things. Yeah. Jump on the mic. I would like to see Drake on the J5P, but I don't know if I want to, if I want to hear uh, J Huss on a 40 beat. It's interesting that you say that, because even though a lot has been happening surrounding like Drake in a way mm. not recently but just in general I'm not really anticipating or waiting for anything from him that's fair I'm kind of I don't want to say I'm done but I'm not done because I enjoy some of his music and I enjoy the old stuff but I'm I don't know maybe the hype is dead would you say because he actually he used you into me, okay. No, no, never no, 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 Let me not even say use you. So like he. Wait, what? No, okay, cool. Let me reword that. That was gonna come out completely wrong. So, do you think that his releases has been dis disappointing? So now you don't really look forward to things. If it happens, it happens. Is that how you sort of feel like with Drake? You know, it is for me. Um, I want to say after probably. 
it's been, it's probably both of these tapes because I think they came out almost a year apart or maybe even the same year. I'm not 100% sure. Mm-hmm. But you know nothing was the same. Mm-hmm. And if you're reading this, it's too late. Mm-hmm. I like both those tapes. Two different reasons. They're, they're kind of different. One sounds like an older Drake. And one sounds like... It's strange, and I don't know how to explain it. But I like those tapes, but then they kind of sounded... Um, I don't know, incomplete or like unfinished. Like they could have been better in a way. Okay. And I don't know. It's like during that whole time period, my music taste converted to because I was already on this stuff. But you know that kind of more Gambino uh, kind of you know that like newish age mm-hmm. rap punk type sing rap type stuff. Uh, you? Obviously, I said like type stuff a lot just then, <laughs> but that type of music where they're influenced by Kid Cudi, but they like rapping and they can rap and they like hip hop beats, but they also like to use guitars and synthesizers and stuff like that in or from the more pop rock sector of music and incorporate the sounds. And that's why I'd be like, I was listening to Kid Cudi's album yesterday when I was on the bus and I don't know, man. It was it was like a throwback to me. And I was just like, yo, Cuddy's hard. And I remember watching Joe Budden's podcast and them lot were saying, yo, but Cuddy can't rap. And then in my head I was thinking, Cuddy don't rap on his songs, but that don't mean he can't rap still. I feel, like, I feel like Cuddy can rap. I feel like he can rap. I feel like there was a time between, uh, there was a time where it was between Charles Gambino and Cuddy. I don't know, man. Because I feel like Cuddy, not in a rude way, but I feel like Cuddy kind of helped father Gambino. 100%. So I don't feel like they kind of on the same. I feel like Cuddy's one, he, he's his generation, then Gabino's his generation, and then there's, do you know what I'm saying? Do you remember Geeks and Freaks? Gambino is the mastermind. Fuck a girl to purse the term. Where he was spitting in like a gym, like a sports hall. I don't know. You've definitely. Is heard it of from it. Um, Camp? I can't remember. It's old though. Okay, cool. You see day and day I think it might be from camp. You see day and night. Day and night. Yeah. Uh-huh, see uh-huh. see around them times it was like an alternative category. But I wouldn't call that a rap song, even though do you know what I'm saying? That whole like that whole man on the moon cardi. He's a he he can make rap music and it's like it has tones of hip hop and rap music. Mm. But it's not that in its entirety. It's like um it's like how I said, it's like an in-between. Because the only reason I described it that way is because I heard Gambino describe it that way once, where he said that um, some of the songs and the vibe from... So you know, like Redbone? Yeah. I think he said that was a punk song. And then I think he also said the same thing about the way, because the internet is being received, not all of the songs are like R&B or rap songs. They are like rock songs and punk songs. That's why they sound only that way. But they get heard and absorbed in so many different ways where it's like the lines I don't want to say they blur because it's like music is music it makes you feel whatever you feel of course yeah but the lines blur a little bit and it just becomes something that you listen to and then ironically it becomes popular and then it becomes pop music so (laughs) that's fair um yeah so yeah we completely diverted let's talk about um Let's talk about Lana Del Rey. Wait, there's some more music. Yeah, let's talk about Lana Del Rey. Um, I thought she had a tape coming out because I had done some research and I saw anticipation. I feel she, I feel However, like she has. Has it come out? It's on. It's if come it's to, come out. It's come out recently, like the last couple of days, because I went looking for it and it wasn't out. I went looking for it. I feel. I feel like she hasn't released it yet, but she's got. It's coming. Yeah. Um. Her last tape, which is a. Uh, let me pick it up. I don't remember the name of it. Uh, Lost for Life. I like that tape because it's got... It sounds similar to Born to Die, but different, like she's evolving in her music. Okay. And it sounds less dark than the previous album that had like Florida Kilos and um, Brooklyn Baby and stuff like that on it. Mm. So Or um, Power Sex Money and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. So... 
it's interesting to kind of hear her journey and the way the music changes over time because vocally her sound sounds a specific way. Do you know what I mean? But it it's evolving well through time. I don't want to say completely through albums, but singles and just what she's been doing. Like the stuff that you know her for. So, yeah. I know it's interesting. She's a, I'm a Lana Del Rey fan. Yeah, so. she's a very interesting character. I feel like there needs to be some sort of history for you to understand her music completely. Yeah, if you just like listen to yeah. one random song or tape. But it's interesting because a lot of people don't know her music, but they like her songs. Yeah, they hear yeah, it's weird, isn't like it? Her songs in movies and stuff like that. So, her voice is very definitely unique. I listened to that clip, the um, Norman fucking Rockwell. Oh, is it? Yeah, I listened to that. I don't know, man. I feel like I've been disconnected to Lana for time. Why do you say disconnected? Why do you use that word specifically? Um, I remember it clearly because you used to bang it. Yeah. Uni terms. But we, nigga, we live together. No, so but I'm just, I'm, like, I'm just saying, like, obviously, from us living together, so many different musicals are being banged yeah. in the yard. So. But Lana wasn't just someone you blast. Lana, something that you would do something with. Do you get what I'm trying to say? So say yeah. for instance you're chilling, you play Lana too. Yeah, I'll clean my room. And then it compliments the mood. Yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. do that. I don't I don't listen to my sister recently started listening to Lana. Is it? Which sister? My little little sister. Is it? Yeah. I like her more and more every day, you know. Yeah. She wanna... sounds like me still. Yeah, I can't she, even she, lie she, to nah, you. She actually is like <laughs> She's been getting gym. I knew she would like the ro as well. She's been getting gym, you know. Is it? Yeah. So yeah. This week she's been getting gym like every day. I said, What do you do in the gym? That's mad, you know. Yeah, I know. That's mad. So yeah, she's trying to get active, innit? That's good yeah. though. Yeah, I she's healthy. I told, yeah, I told her that you can't be chilling at home like that. I'll take you somewhere, but boy, when I'm not there, you gotta do your own thing. I hear that. It's good though. It makes her social as well. Exactly, exactly. But so she's, she's very not socially awkward, and yeah, there. she's never been socially awkward. She's just she does probably because she has so many older siblings. Yeah. So. but she doesn't like socialising with everyone. That's good though. She yeah. knows she wants. She to knows how to fill her, and that's yeah. one thing I'm so happy I don't have to teach her. No, real too. That's uh, real uh, stuff. So. Uh, last artist, Anderson Peck. I have said last. Let me go off my list. Oh, there's more? Um, there's Solange When I Get Home. Oh, yes. How can I forget? I had listened to this album, obviously, because it had been pending for me to listen to. And I listened to it, I think I've listened to it two and a half times. And I'm a fan. At the first time I listened to it, I was going to sleep. And it put me to bed. I listened to, I think, eight tracks. Well, I started to sleep and then YouTube messed me up. So that was enjoyable. I woke up the next day. I listened to it again on my journeys and I vibes with it. However, I did find myself kind of, you know, when you hear a song from one album and it reminds you of a song from her previous album. So you go back and listen to the song from the previous album. That happened to me a couple of times. Same. So I would say that's probably why it was two and a half times, but I very much enjoyed it. And once again, it's, as an entirety, I can listen to the whole album and I enjoy it. I don't want to skip songs or at least all the songs, yeah? And as a second, it kind of just reminds me that, again, I can listen to two Solange albums now, but I find it hard to listen to a complete Beyonce album. Mm. So I found that interesting, but I know Beyonce's got an album coming. So, you know... Oh, it is released. That opinion could be changed. In fact, I'm looking at it right now. Let me get it out. How many tracks on it? Just give me a sec. Ooh, what's it called as well? Oops. It's called The Homecoming, the live album. Yeah, oh, it's, it's a live album, so yeah. it's like from a concert. Damn. So it's not her actual album. Yeah. Yeah, you're bugging still. I saw it on the timeline. I went, oh, Beyonce's got a new album. It's got 40 damn tracks. I love singing. Do you reckon she marketed it off her sister's name? In the sense of, because the album is called When I Get Home and you called, she called it Homecoming. Probably. Do you know what this means? This probably means a new tour. They might go on tour together. That mm. would be a good tour. That's that would be, yeah. you would get the Neo Soul chicks and you will get the chicks that are the, what, Beehive chicks and then you'll get <laughs> everything. That would be imagine it. Because you know the chicks that are um, Solange stands and the girls that are beautiful. Yeah. Beehive, they're not friends. Of course. 
Them chicks are not like. Of course. They're, they're not cold these like that. That like would that. be weird, I can't lie. So that would be quite. That would have to be a festival though for me, though, I can't lie. What, just them two? Yeah. I don't know, man. You would have to throw Destiny's Child in there as well. Ding. And then you should get all the youngins like um, SZA and Kalani uh, and them lot and then just bring them lot on the tour. It should be like a women's empowerment tour for just music. That would be wavy. I think that they've done something similar to that. It's like a they probably thing. have, I'll be honest yeah. with you. Get Janae up there. Jeez. But you have to bring Ariana then there'll be beef because Big Sean will come. Hey. <laughs> Sean Dan. Talking about Sean Dan. I'm looking forward to his tape. So am I. I don't know when it's coming, but I'm looking forward to it. I really hope it's good. But you know, from the conversation with Joe, you'd make uh, somewhat of an assumption that... Sean is a nice guy. (laughs) 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 Oh, Joe's so funny, bro. To be fair, speaking of Kalani, uh, I listened to Kalani's tape and it's called um, While We Wait. While We Wait. Um... I like it. It sounds nice. It sounds... I don't want to say it sounds different from her previous takes because her vocally, she kind of sounds the same. Mm-hmm. Her voice may sound a little more pure, like, so a little less... I don't know. I don't want to say pitchy or tony. It was just like... It sounds clearer. Mm. Or more clear. Um, Do you know my issues with Kalani? I just feel like she just doesn't stand out. But why does one have to stand out? You just have to make music. People will come to the music. It's like what they say, build the mountain and they will come. I mean it in the sense that when I listen to her music, nothing strikes me as something that I'll go back to. I hear that. I don't know, because I like, you know, the track with Chance and all of them things. She's there, good. So. She's good, but like, you sounding good in the future doesn't mean you're going to sound good. It's her me. song. No? Yeah, Chance is the future. That's her song. I apologise. It's a banging track. Yeah, she is. I don't she know. She makes good music, fam. She does make good music, but she's again, a good artist as well. Has you got any good tapes? I've only listened to one previous tape. I forget the name. However, it was a good time ago, and I, I liked it. However, I didn't like it enough to keep it in my phone. Do you listen to Tink? No, what's Tink? Um, one sec. I want to make sure I got her name correct. Yeah, it's Tink. Yeah. So she's a she's a singer and a rapper. Nah, I haven't listened to Tink. I remember listening to a track of her singing. She sounds a very good singing, but apparently she's a very good rapper as well. And I feel like someone told me that she, because I asked someone, who do you, who do you think is like a Lauren Hill reincarnate in this current generation? And she said the only person that I can probably think of right now that is close to that is Tink. It's Tina Apex. Not many people know about Tino. Yeah, but it is Tino still. So. Big up Tino, pro era. Beast Coast album coming real soon. That's another one as well. They had an interview with Ebro the other day on Beats. I don't like Ebro, man. Yeah, neither do I, but... I don't like Ebro. I don't like that Arthur Don. What's his name? Zane Rosenberg. Though. I don't like Rosenberg either. I don't like Zane though as well from Apple. He's annoying. Zane, you know? I don't like his interview with Nicki Minaj and all them things there. I don't like their interview setting. I don't, I don't yeah, like neither do I. Neither do I. don't like Pete's. I prefer Tidal. Um, Anderson Beck. Well, yeah. Do you want to just go? I have other ones. I have like, other tapes I've listened to. Yeah, that you can do that. Quite interesting. And obviously, I know you've heard some of the Anderson Pat takes, so I want to get to that last. Mm. But another tape I heard, I listened to Flume's tape, if you guys know Flume. Flume is the people that made my boo, if you know that rhythm, from a couple of years ago. It's not actually their rhythm. They kind of revamped it and stuff like that, but they make kind of... Uh, it's interesting, isn't it? Because basically, I don't know if you know who this is. I can show you a photo, actually. Google him. His name is Joey Diaz, everybody. J-O-E-Y-D-I-A-Z. He's a comedian and an actor. He has a podcast called The Church of What's Happening. And I was watching an episode of that. And they were talking about, uh, I think it was Pink Floyd. And basically, they spoke of how Pink Floyd was one of the first bands, if not the first band, 
to actually have things going on in their performance. They had things in the background, they had lighting, they had lasers, they had so many things that the sound that was in the stadium at the time whilst they were performing their shows, everything was about the performance and how everything visually sounded and how everything every how everything audio audio wise sounded and how everything visually looked. So it was all about pleasing the people that came to kind of give them the Pink Floyd experience. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What I learned from this was that because they were pretty much the first band to do this, they kind of kind of changed the the setting on how bands would perform. On top of which, they also, the type of music they made was so different in the realm of that they would put mad things like airplane noises and just alarms and stuff like that in the music where... The way they described it at the time of which Pink Floyd came up and they were rising and they listened to it, it was very much in that LSD, acid, psychedelic era. Right. So their music is very much of that kind of cloth. Do you know what I'm saying? I see. It make it helps you to feel that way. It helps with that whole vibe. It helps with all of that. But it also, like, when you listen to it regardless, depending on what tape it is, you get a general vibe. And... What they said about it is that when they done all of these shows, they couldn't go on world tours because of how much was involved in creating the show at the time. It was in like, I think it was in like 1970s. Yeah. Okay. So they would only do shows in like two states. And it was like Philadelphia and another state. And they just about broke even. So in my head, I'm thinking, yo, you're one of the most famous rock bands ever. And you've only done a couple like, you haven't done worldwide tours like a Led Zeppelin or uh, the Beatles or even, do you know what I'm saying, Michael Jackson. Like, Mm -hmm. you were big. Do you know what I'm saying? So I thought it was interesting that they had helped kind of pioneer things, but they never spread out worldwide-wise. But they made such a kind of dramatic change. Yeah, yeah. And then it just related back to the way I had the Flume album, because the Flume album is kind of, it's not rock, but it's a kind of accumulation of sound. And it's very uh, untraditional. So it was an interesting thing to listen to. Okay. So, yeah. And it's probably like, you know when we speak of interludes? Mm Mm-hmm. And you listen to like because the internet and you got like flight navigator interlude and stuff like that. It was like so that. funny. That's that's the first band that came to mind. You know Matt Martians, the the drummer for the internet. No. Uh, so he, he has a tape. Is it called? I can't remember what it's called, but he has a tape, and then he's got his tr- this track called "Found Me Some Acid Tonight," and then it's exactly what you what you just um, described. That's what it sounds like. That's why I feel like a lot of that. So if you speak of like maybe that's. When you when we speak of like Kid Cudi and Childish Gambino and certain artists like that of that older caliber, but they make a certain type of music that some wouldn't call hip hop or rap. Mm-hmm. I feel like that's a lot of where the those are the type of places where the influences came from, as well as you know other old school yeah, yeah, solely yeah. and other type music. But I feel like the whole pop rock era, punk rock definitely era, definitely influential massively influential and it's interesting because of, they've influenced a lot of the music now but then people don't realise the kind of connections so yeah and the way the music has changed I so that Flume album was interesting to me anyway just quickly um, the Matt Martians tape is called The Drum Chord Theory came The out Drum tw- Code Theory yeah that's quite cold still um, came out in 2017 it's pretty good still I might go back to listen to it it's got this R&B soul um, feel to it it's good still check that out another tape I listened to um, Labyrinth Labyrinth or whatever this Donnie's name is uh, Sia and Diplo they made a tape together so it's like an accumulation of songs that I feel like individually they might have wrote and then mm. stuff that they come together and kind of put together and remade the song in different ways It's they don't the songs don't sound dramatically different I think some of them are new some of the songs are already out but it's interesting. They called the album LSD. And I don't know, some of it, yeah, it's, I feel like it's, um. do you know the song Bohemian Rhapsody? How it's supposed, has like opera based. They've done a similar thing, 
but it's like a new age techno kind of drum and bass. But because you know how them lot, you know how like Diplo and them lot make yeah, 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 yeah. a certain type of music, but then it's also they're all very much vocally very, very skilled. So mm-hmm. they all have the the knowledge of let's say traditional music, mm. but they've kind of twisted it into what they wanted it to be and make I, it exactly sound it's, it's a very yeah. interesting tape you, you played me one track and I, I understand what you're saying it sounds very sort of like I can't put it into a genre but like seeing FKJ live that's exactly what well, I I, I would it say to it's you. interesting because like our iTunes would classify it to pop because a lot those three are made known for making popular music yeah so it's easy for them to kind of classify them onto what they are but then, they've the first track is called "Welcome to the One Wonderful One uh, World of." I think it's called LSD. Wonderful World of like LSD. It's crazy. It's just on um, streaming services. Yeah, I think so. It's called. Yeah, just type LSD into um, you know like a Spotify or iTunes. Yeah, I see it. So, it's yeah. a playlist. Sick. It's a playlist, but they kind of... Met, so it's like they recreated the songs to make it where it is. Do you know what I mean? Because some of the songs are already out. That's why it struck me as something. So I didn't expect these people, these three specific people to link up and go, yo, let's make a collaborative effort to make some music and put mm. it out together and and create a vibe. Yeah. So I found that properly interesting. And then, yeah, the last one, other than, you know, AJ Manson and Anderson Pack is Pink Sweats Volume 2. You heard it, yeah? I would listen to it numerous times. It's shorter than Volume 1. And he called this one an EP, which is interesting. It makes me think that he's got an actual album coming. Um, he gave me similar vibes to the same of that. He does still remind me of Justin Bieber. Like, if he doesn't write his songs, Justin might have written these songs. Yeah. Or... The person that wrote some of Justin's songs might have wrote these songs. Mm-hmm. Do you guys, or he might have been the one that was helping write Justin's songs. I don't know. Like, I feel like there's a similarity between both of their sounds. Yeah. Um, when I first saw how many songs were on it, it kind of... if There's five songs in it. Okay. It struck me because... I was watching a TV series at the time, and in my head I was like, how come TV series and albums have gotten shorter over time? Because when we was younger, TV series used to be like 24, 26 episodes. Now they're like 10 or 12. Albums used to be like 24 tracks, 20 tracks. Now they're like 7 or 10. It's our attention. There's so much stuff out there. So I found that interesting. I was just like, I enjoyed I enjoyed the second half of the album. The first two tracks sound more country. And the last three tracks sound a little bit more, uh, I don't want to say soul or R&B-ish because it's hard to kind of define where he is. But R and B ish and soulish, so they're more kind of my vibe. Mm, I hate you. So I enjoyed that. I like the artwork. It reminded me of like um I don't know like a World of Warcraft or something. It's strange. It looks a little bit off. And then another thing I heard was the Rihanna Angel Fenty Fan- Fantasia that was leaked, where it's just kind of like her doing covers and like freestyles and songs and stuff like that, which I enjoyed because it just sounds like a different Rihanna, different from the whole unapologetic and all of that it sounds I think Chris Brown's on it as well which I didn't like and I didn't understand because I don't want to judge her or not a minute because I love Rihanna but if a man punched you up how are you friends with him but you're quote unquote not friends with Drake and I don't know what happened and I don't care if you're not friends it's not my business <laughs> but them things don't add up to me do you got what I'm saying mm. I feel like that's just a fundamental flaw a man put his hands on you up on a different level I hear that but still a nigga put his hands on you and everyone knows I can't lie to you in public you can't that nigga can't jump on your songs anymore. No Come on. Boy. Say a girl put hands on you, you're going to let her jump on your song. <sighs> like, and everyone knows she fucked you up. <sighs> She'd be lucky to be seeing my face. If you punched up a girl, because I know you won't, but God forbid, would you go and jump on her song? Why would I do that? If I punch her, I don't like it. <laughs> do you get what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's like, I don't understand what Chris Brown is doing. So, yeah, that's another one. And I don't know about AJ... But for me, on my side, on the Knife House, I would like to say we are not Chris Brown fans out here. Oh, definitely. Because I don't like Chris Brown. I don't like his... I don't not like his music, at least all of it. I like some of it. 
But I just don't like him as a human being from what I've discovered about him. He don't sound like good people's. You know, I like Chris Palmer before he done his madness. I thought Yeah, like, he just don't be acting right Right now, now I just, you know. He acts a damn fool. Yeah. And then, you know, the last album that we have to discuss here is uh, Anderson Pack Ventura. AJ's shaking his phone trying to undo something he done in notes, which is hilarious. <laughs> I thought I deleted the, the whole thing. They just opened a new <laughs> note. Okay. I was like, uh, <laughs> I'm not prepared to lose all of this now. So what did you think of uh, Anderson Pack's album? So I ran it through. Mm -hmm. It sounded immediately better. It sounded like a, like a, like a, a respectable follow up to Malibu. What I got before with Oxnard, it just the direction was completely left. Now I don't know. What, I think the sound resembled Malibu's more. What this this tape? Venture, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's what I said. When I listened nah, to, I'm agreeing with yeah, you. Yeah. So when when I listened to Oxnard, again, like I said, I, I don't I don't understand the the dynamics between Dr Dre and Danson Pack whether they have agreed to throw out X amount of tapes between a year but mm. that tape wasn't it for me personally and you can even like when I ask people who actually went to see Anderson Pat live over there like You're talking Alice Andre Palace yeah obviously people you're pointing yeah, to yeah, the palace yeah. innit <laughs> and they don't they can't yeah, see yeah. Dotty, so. <laughs> I forgot but yeah so they told me that his his main set was just Mac tributes or just tracks off Malibu so it sort of gives me the feeling that he that didn't really he's not feeling yeah that he's not really feeling that tape okay. either and the fact that he dropped it well, Miles was there, innit? Yeah. Okay. If, yeah, in fact, Miles was mine, I told us. It was, and the fact that he's actually dropping the tape months after he dropped that, his, after he dropped Oxford. It kind of reminds you of... Um, Deion Taylor. Yes. So... However, the tape that Kanye produced for her is actually quite good. Kanye just fucked up. But the tape is good. Yeah, like yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. The first... Let's say the first half. Yeah. Or at least half of the album is good. So, now Oxnard isn't a completely bad tape. Like it's got some. Good I haven't tracks. heard it, so obviously I can't speak on it. But, but obviously, you chat on it. Yeah. How how does it differ? It's very commercial, very commercial. So is it like Kendrick's Damn? I would say it was. It, it was. I would say if I had to pick a tape from Anderson Pack's discography that would resemble Damn, would be that. Okay. He's got a couple of tracks. Like it's got a track with J Cole. It's good, but for me, like it's just another track that J Cole came on and spazzed on. Like, I wouldn't really say, oh, Anderson Pack, yeah, well, well done. It's just, yeah, it's just one of those things. But uh, Ventura, I listened to it and it immediately sound better. What's your favourite track of the new tape? Obviously, you know mine. Yeah. Mine is Winning Circles. I mean, winner, winning the Winner's Circle. I don't know what's wrong with me, man. That was a tongue twister for me. I'm sorry, y'all. It's all on me. Players fuck up. Right. My favourite track would be... Is it the Andre 3000 track? Because no, I've seen listen... that's been very popular. And I, like... I think only because of Andre 3000, because yeah. it's not the best track at all. My question to you, do you reckon um, Free Stacks was sober while, while writing that verse? Why do you say that? How can you, like, they, they spoke about this in the Budden podcast as well, like, how can you consistently spit like that? Like, what possesses you to spit like that? What do you mean? Like the fact that he he packs in so many different words and things into one line, but the clarity is so mad. So, I mean, he's been doing this, you know. Yeah, what know. do you mean? Like he's been doing this. Yeah, but I, I know he's been doing like, this. Like this is his job, y'all. Yeah, I understand this that. This is his job. But imagine being on that wave. <laughs> his wave must so be So you different. thought he had to be off his nut yeah. on the lean lean <laughs> for him to be able to lick it like I don't that. know. I, I don't know about the lean lean, but you know, it, it just sounds mad. But um, I don't know the name of the track, so I can't lie to you, but it sounded really nice because I just played it through. Okay. No, I've done the same thing, but obviously I've gotten into the habit of starting to screenshot the songs I like. Oh, uh, I see. Or like heart them, but the heart is unproductive because I can't go back and find which ones mm. are hearted on face value. So, you know how it is, isn't it? You know how I go. It's good though. I, yeah, I enjoyed it. But yeah, man. So that wraps up our music segment um if you're a listener and you want to sort of like input tracks that you listen to or just you just want to you know give us um tracks for us to listen to and give us and for, i can't even get my words out give us tracks where we can give our opinions to 
or you know just publicize it on our platform just let us know hit us up hit us up on the socials aj dotty and matt karoshi dms be open um yeah let's move on let's move on to sports i'm trying to find the nba playoffs brackets thing so i can see who won what i haven't hit. watched all the highlights i've got it well i've, I've only got game one yeah but, game one highlight that's how i know he won game one um so golden state lost to the clippers lost net yes um i think raptors won last net so sort of their that's level huh their level who do they play magic they lost one sec. I actually, I have it up here. You sure? Yeah, You yeah. got it? The first round? Sorry, I just saw a text. I was a bit mad still. All right, cool. So, where do I start? So, so with the East. That is all together still. So, so start from top. Bucks played who? Bucks played... Now, let me start with the Sixers, yeah. So, Bucks played Pistons. Mm-hmm. So, that was game one. They beat Pistons. So, I think they're level on the... And actually, they're playing today. So, okay, cool. So, that, that game is, is um game played today. They won. They won the first game. I watched Yeah, it. yeah, yeah. But game two. But I want to know the standings. Like, who's winning? Yeah, so it's game 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 one, two Bucks. Okay. Um, um, Boston are leading in the first game as well. So, they're playing tonight as well. Really? Uh, who's Boston playing? Pacers. Okay. Blazers, uh, the Blazers. Without all the depot people, obviously we all know he's gone. <laughs> the Blazers played OKC two 0 up. That's all mad. The Blazers are two zero up yeah, from yeah. OKC. Something. He was at home. Who had home court? Uh, the old Bradford is calling me. Um, Did you say Bradford is yeah. calling? Yeah. Yeah. You're out there though, isn't it? The so. Bradford. Um. Sorry. I know you got peoples everywhere. This guy, but um, so what was I even gonna say to you? He was home, yeah. He played at home. Um, I don't know whether it was back to back, but I know the next game's gonna be at home, so I don't know what that means. No, but who played at home? The Blazers, oh, just recently, okay. Sorry, recently, Blazers, okay. Oh, uh, yes, okay. So he came like seventh. I don't yeah. even know why I asked that question. That was dumb. Sorry, um, well, they can lose that, you know, mm. if they lose these next two games, but if they win that next game today. No, I think playing today. Well, tomorrow. Yeah. No, yeah, they play on Thursdays. They play Thursdays and Saturday. Um, then yeah, it can become a real problem. Be for real, you. for real. That and for... I will feel sorry for Paul George. I won't feel sorry for Russell Westbrook because <laughs> he just steals everything. But uh, he yeah. worked hard, but he he's not. He is a team player, but he's not a team player in it. I don't know how to phrase it. Everyone knows what I'm talking about. If you've seen the NBA, you know who Russell Russell Westbrook is, isn't it? So. But go on, sorry. Nuggets beat Spurs. So they're tied. Is it? They're tied now. Yeah. I see that first game still was quite intense. Did think... you see um, KD in the first game? Yo, he got ejected. Oh, yeah, I heard. And he dashed money. He dashed the man to the floor. It was bare I heard, still. I heard, I heard. They, um... And then apparently in game two, he got D'd up by him. And this done is 6-1. He's shorter than me. And he D'd KD. I'm thinking, yo, can I D KD? What's his name? Bethany or Beth? I forget his name. I forget his name. He only plays for the yeah, Clippers. Yeah, yeah. He didn't play. Well, he apparently he's he played not well. that good. Yeah, he's not. He's, he just plays with heart. Yeah, defensively, he really. Yeah. yeah. So. In fact, I can get his name up. Just give me a sec. Beverly. Patrick Be- and Beverly. I was going to say Patrick Beverly. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, no, nah, I don't want Patrick Beverly. I don't think that was the guy that. Got him ejected yesterday, but it might have been. But Beverly's good still. Yeah, yeah. He's just not great. Let's put it that way. He's all heart. Yeah, he's he got it in like, him, man. He's he looks got, like it. He come like Choji. He's got all the heart. <laughs> I can't believe that. I w- I watched the highlights, isn't it? Mm. They um, they effed up a thirty point, thirty one point lead. Oh, you're talking the second game. Yeah. Yes. That's what well, KD only got uh, I think it was eight shots off, seven shots off mm. in the whole game. So, shit happens, isn't it? And DeMarcus Cousins is all injured. Yeah, he got injured. Which I found quite surprising, but when you go back and you think about the injury he had, he was always vulnerable. It was, is that a um, reoccurring injury? He had an Achilles injury. Oh, but this one is his fire. Yeah, but think yeah. about it. You're running. Achilles, your whole leg. Like, that whole leg. Yeah. 
You should kind of quit sports after the day Achilles. That's all peak. Yeah, Achilles is dangerous, man. Some people don't make it back. Mm, look at the Titan. Just. Um, Raptors Magic, game tied. Raptors won that last game. So how's it won a piece? Did Magic win the first game? Yeah. Okay. But Kawhi played that. That was the first game I watched in the playoffs. Is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Speaking of which, let's go to this one. The Philadelphia Sixers. I'm just about to get into that. Because I watched that game. And your watch. ass, your team lost. But you know what? Uh, Against D'Angelo Russell. Uh, let me let me let me just put this out there. Let me, let me get closer to the max. So it's D Russ. D Russ. I like the Sixers. I like the Sixers in it, but I don't feel that connection. The matter thing is, yeah, you damn well know that I had to change my decidings on the Brooklyn Nets rather than the 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 Knicks because the Knicks is low key racist, and the Nets is like Jay Z's team and all of them type of things there. So. If it's if if Kyrie goes, that's my next team, AJ. And if you get a mash up, as I was saying, you know I'm gonna have bragging rights. Right now, I'm a free agent. No, you're not. You're a Sixers fan. Stop no. trying to switch it up. Because no. you first you was OKC, then you tried to tell me Sixers. Yeah, there's no loyalty in it. No, I just there's don't no al- rules in I it. Just AJ. Don't, Look I just don't. I just don't align align the Sixers or OKC. I don't like Westbrook. There's no rules in it. Look at you. And just. Uh, I don't know. Phil, the Sixers don't play my type of. Do you know what it is? Yeah, of, of man's gonna like come it. to you next season at the beginning of the next season. I'm gonna ask you who are you back in this year. Don't Who's worry. your team? Yeah, and I'm gonna make you stick with it the rest of your life. To be, to be honest with you, I've been watching the Celtics, isn't it? Yeah, but do you know what? I just don't like the franchise anymore because they're pissing me off. I've been a Celtics fan for 24 years, and fam, I've had like two, two. Two rings, fam. Sounds like the old Arsenal. It sounds very like that Arsenal. It's quite sad to thought. But uh, they play good possible. They got good players. But yeah, what happened in game two with Philly? They won, I think. Is it? Yeah, they That's won. That's surprising. And what happened? Oh, you said Boston's game two is today. Yeah. Okay. So that's interesting. That's interesting. I'm going to watch that tonight. That should be good. Looking forward to it. You want to talk about LeBron, didn't you? Do I? Yeah, I'm sure. Why? The fact that there's a change now, you know. LeBron is... Ah, okay. Yeah. That's very true. Look at you. Seeing shit. The Dawson. Um, LeBron, I don't know. I just said that I feel like there would be... like The, the NBA is en route to a change. Because this is LeBron's first year. And then Magic left. And now they fired Luke Walton. And he's been picked up by Sacramento. And so much has happened. And he's the only person left with him, Jeannie Bust, and I forget that, Rob Pelinka. Yeah. What are they going to do? Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Everyone's the discussion currently right now is that, oh, do you let LeBron bring in his people to help kind of manage the Lakers team? And then someone made a value point to a valid point to that. How am I going to be playing for the Lakers? And my teammate helps run the team. <laughs> then he is not equal on the team. Do you know what I'm saying? Was he ever equal? Though? No, but do you know what I'm saying? Like there was that illusion that was supposed to be put in place that he is equal. This is where my confusion with basketball comes in. Why? Because it seems it's Ronaldo like, equal. Ren- no. It's Messi. No, but re- it's Mbappe. See, Messi. Me- Messi is probably the only player. I mean, it's even Messi. No, but in the sense that Messi is probably the only player that I can I can I can put my hand on and say he done it with Argentina where he picks the team. I don't think. I think Ronaldo does that with Portugal. Hands maybe down. maybe Portugal too. Maybe yeah, but I, I can think see he low key might have done it with Real Madrid depending on the manager. Okay, cool. Ronaldo as well. Ronaldo and Messi probably the only two. But in basketball, you see low key. It, you see it more. I often. swear, PSG had like two managers since Neymar's been there because of him. Yeah, but Neymar doesn't manage the team. Yeah, but low key. Neymar makes the team, but yeah. Neymar doesn't manage the team. I heard that. All right, cool. Fair enough. So There was that rumour about how Cavani might have had to go because Neymar didn't yeah, like yeah. him, but you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Neymar's <laughs> going some G <laughs> shit, bruv. But yeah, man. So That's how athletes are, man. I don't know what to say. It's interesting. I, I like the sport of basketball because it's, it's very like, players are very hands-on on things. Yeah, but I don't think LeBron should have the power he has. I don't think he deserves it either. 
Why do you say that? I don't think he's as a world athlete as everyone else is. Because when you compare him to the other world athletes that they compare him to, they are the best in their field, maybe of all time. Mm. LeBron is not. It's very clear. You, you've you gone to the finals eight times while you only got three rings. Don't. Cristiano Ronaldo went to the finals three times. He got three rings. Talking about Ronaldo. Messi won all four competitions mm. in one year. Talking about Ronaldo, there's a change in football as well. I remember that conversation we had a couple couple months ago. Well, He's yeah, that's interesting, especially because of yesterday. Yeah, there's an actual reset in football now. I watched that. Show. I say it. State facts. Yeah, I well, said it first. <clears throat> go ahead. Obviously, I said to AJ the other day, it would be amazing if we could witness a young Ajax team win the Champions League and kind of because as as let's say that nineties generations, nineties babies, all of them things there. We've witnessed a lot of stuff. We've witnessed um, the Olympics in London. Yeah. We've witnessed the fastest man in the world. We've witnessed suicide bombings. We've witnessed tsunamis. We've witnessed the rise of the internet. We, we've seen so much change brought on the world, all the way to Brexit. Like, you rarely think about it, because I say it to my mum, innit, when, she, when we have this discussion about Brexit. And I say to her, honestly, we haven't been in Europe that long. But to about two generations of people, you've been in Europe their whole lives. Mm-hmm. So it's like, it seems like such a dramatic change. Yeah. But it really isn't. It's been like 60 years, I think. Maybe 70 now. I, I think it happened like 1950s or yeah. 1930s. So maybe 100. But it hasn't been dramatically long. So it's interesting that people feel so kind of un- uneased by it. But then there's also... Well, you can understand why, though. Yeah, 100% I understand why. It's immigration. Why mm. would you not feel strange and uneased about it? You're going to a whole new place or you're trying. they're trying to kick you out where you are, what you call home. Yeah. To... Or literally force you out if you can't afford things. Yeah. Through trade and that. Uh, when I was on the bus and I was going through a green, there was um, a thing outside the library, yeah? where someone was trying to get people to sign petitions about Brexit so that people can stay. And then I heard that there might be riots and, like, um, what's the word? Um, protests. Protests regarding the matter, yeah. especially because there's a no-deal Brexit. Yeah. However, I feel like that that was the kind of plan to begin with. Well, no deal. Yeah, but however, I didn't vote, so I don't care, I'll yeah. be honest with you. I care, but I don't care, I'll be real, like, yeah, but what was your what was your point? Um, something arose in my mind as I was thinking about everything, and my point was, um, I was thinking about global warming, yeah. Right. So the effects of the the effects that we have created, so the changes that we have brought upon the ecosystem, mm-hmm. to then bring upon changes to the world and on the world, yeah. Mm-hmm. To which how they will affect us in return. Like it's a whole calm I don't even know what the, the plural of karma would be, but it's a whole karma thing. Like one thing happens, next thing happens, it's coming right back to you. Right. The next thing happens. It's coming it's right a, back yeah, to you. Frisbee effect. So well that'd be boomerang, but boomerang, I said frisbee in it. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh shit. But yeah, that's the that's the vibe I'm getting. And as I was thinking about it, it just it become an interesting topic in my mind because I thought about how I was doing research and basically what had come up was that due to the, the rising sea levels, certain countries that have kind of their their lands are on sea level or mm-hmm. just above sea level or not dramatically higher, they will suffer from certain situations first. One of the places that came up and it was my local, even though your mind should not work that way, I instantly saw it and it was Venice Mm -hmm. and obviously Venice is the city of water they're already stating that certain places in Venice are getting brought under the sea due to rising sea levels meaning that all of those people that inhabit Venice will have to leave Venice Yeah. meaning that they have to migrate if we're leaving Europe and all of these things are happening to the earth wouldn't the best thing to do to kind of expand the European Union rather than trying to kind of delegate and make things tighter and you should be kind of broadening the requirements. It's going to backfire on us. 
I don't even feel like it's just us though. Because ironically, say we do not suffer from uh, the effects of climate change the way others in like, let's say Eastern Europe do mm-hmm. or other places in Europe at the same times. And we are one of the, the later countries. People are going to want to migrate to us. So we will try to take advantage of that, which is all good and well. However, they're going to do that for like economic status or money or things like that, yeah? How much weight do these things hold when the world is going to end? Like, the things that you're trying to kind of play your games with, at the end of the day, they're not going to matter. The things that matter is the life that you are playing with. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? So I feel like instead of creating all of these borders and parameters, we need to be finding ways and discovering new initiatives to kind of solidify the changes that are going to occur. Because when we're all like 40 and we've got kids and all of them things, they're all 50, there's going to be less countries, there's going to be less people, there's going to, stuff like that. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm. Sea levels are going to rise, there's going to be way more world natural disasters, there's going to be way more tropical devastations happening. And it's going to, it might even become like a regular occurrence in the news. And it's going to be sad. So it's like, there are so many things that can be done to prevent all of these changes Mm -hmm. in the sense of the, the... the damage they can cause to, to lives. And is it just extends onto the fact of that, like I was even doing research on to um, how many animals have been extinct from 2017 to 2018, 2019, and what's the rate? And you know why they, why they is, why is it they say that rhinos are extinct? Because they can't find any male ones. I swear. Yes. So they're saying that from that rhinos that are still alive, once they die, they will be, so they're technically extinct because they cannot, find a way to recreate. Mm. So it's interesting. It's like a lot of why a lot of what might, might be happening is that one due to hunting and you will hunt whichever animal is the hunter. A lot of the time it's the man, sometimes it's the woman. Yeah. And then you also hunt due to like um rarity, which means extinction levels mm. are high. Uh, yeah. So you're doing things to progress all of this on top of which you're fucking up their ecosystem by killing the animals that live in the ecosystem. So you're not just killing that animal, you create a whole chain reaction of death. Mm. And now there's no chain reaction of rebirth. And it's just fucking up the planet, fam. If I'm correct, I'm not sure whether there were seagulls, but I was watching a video where um, there was, I think it was seagulls, they were trying to um, they were trying to travel, right? And because I think that they were in like a snow, snowy environment, but because all the snow has melted, they were um, they had no choice but to climb. But because they're not genetically trained to to climb, or they haven't got features to climb, they were climbing and they were falling. And then there was like a like a power of like dead seagulls everywhere of them climbing and that's just, not even surprising it's bro, mad like that it's like that. when they see the documentary about like Somaliland and certain places in Africa they have massive graveyards of dead animals just like when you watch Lion King and they go to the elephant graveyard mm. there's literally a massive piece of land where there's a load of corpses and animal bones because yeah. animals have died from starvation and lack of water and all of these disease and all of these things so it's crazy man it, people don't feel like it's a situation because it's not directly affecting them but it is a massive situation mm. and Man. i don't know it like it i felt good because the other day i got on the bus and i saw a girl she was younger than us she was looked like she was in her late teens like 19 and she had a little like protest banner type thing and she's on the bus and it was about global warming mm. and it was very artistic but it was also like the message was clear and i was just looking at it and i was like yo we need me more people like you. Do you know what I'm saying? I like, it. I don't know. Even though what's happening in the world, it made me feel good about the small things that you can see certain times. Mm. So yeah. But back to uh, <laughs> the sports point. Um, Brexit can also obviously affect the way we recruit young players. Like you said before, or we recruit players, players who don't have visas, players who. Um, yeah, players who don't have visas or can't get a working permit and stuff, it will make it significantly difficult, difficult. to 
actually get these players in here, whether it's France, whether it's Germany, outside the EU, or yeah, in the EU rather, it'll be difficult with Brexit. Well, it's interesting because what I think it comes down to is that even, I don't think it solely comes down to this, but I feel like to keep the kind of stature of the attraction of bringing international players to England to play in the Premier League mm-hmm. and other leagues, it's probably the level of play. So the fact that there's four English teams and we're in the semi-finals of the Champions League. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Every team that got into it is in the semi-final. Those type of things kind of, I feel like, help bring the stature back. So even though Brexit will bring upon some kind of issues, I feel like... In the realms of football, everything could kind of stay similar to how it is. There all might be minute changes, yeah. but I don't feel like they'll be dramatic. There's definitely positives to it in regards to playing more homegrown players or having a bigger homegrown quota at clubs. So by that, I mean having players who have played um, at their respective club for X amount of times or X amount of years and them actually playing in the Premier League, etc. So I think that that could be a benefit. And obviously with what I'm trying to achieve with that line, it aligns with, you know, giving players careers in the Football League because, you know, not everyone can make it to the Premier League. The Premier League is like, you know, a creme de la It's an elite league. Yeah, it's an elite you league. You get paid stupid money yeah. if you don't play. Not everyone makes it, but you can still make a career at yourself if you play in the EFL. You could play in the in English Football League. You might go to Scotland. You might go somewhere else, but you make a living. And if you work hard, like... There's been case studies where players have played in these leagues and made the made their name, worked hard, got their career out of themselves in top leagues, playing against top players, and then yeah, you know. No, I 100 percent agree. Like a good example for what it is that can happen if you get that one good game or have a couple, like have a half a good season. I would say, even though it's strange to say, I would say Robinson is a good example. Liverpool left back. Because he played for Hull. He hadn't played in the Premier League like that. I don't think he even had played in the Premier League. Cause that was, I think that was his first season at Hull. Like yeah, the season before the he was in Scotland team. or something. Yeah, so it's like couple seasons before. that That travel to him being realistically one of the best left-backs in the world. In, mm-hmm. the recognition, in the recognition of that, he played in the Champions League final. He's in the semi-final of the Champions League. He challenged for the, the title two years. Even as a player. and just has, Yeah, he does his role very well. Mm. So... Stuff like that, I feel like those are the type of situations and then you get the situations of like Trent and Rashford and uh, Pereira, even though he's Brazilian, he can come and he's making it into the squad and do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. All of those type of situations I feel like can can help. Yeah. It will be definitely interesting. I see a lot of um, football talk between now and 2020. Mm. I saw something in the newspaper about the 2020 initiative in football. So, like, a whole rebrand in certain leagues. I think they're trying to rebrand it to incorporate America. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah I definitely They're agree. trying to grow their league. I saw an American advert on BT Sports while, while I was watching. I saw an American advert as well. While watching... You know, I found Champions interesting. League. Let's what? discuss this, isn't it? Um, it just elbowed on the advert for Squarespace, the, okay. the website yeah. content management system. Yeah. I found that dramatically strange. Why? Because he's an actor who does proper movies and mm-hmm. he's loose or son yeah but you're doing a squarespace advert which tells me if you get in Lufa, it might not be a money thing however you must be making good money have you seen his net netflix show or netflix film which one uh about his music career no nah. he yeah so he, there's a film where he you know why is squarespace involved no, it's not but Squ- squarespace are you know when it comes to like did he make a website or something and use squarespace uh, uh, I haven't watched it. Obviously, Squarespace, uh, if you're trying yeah. to hand out that check, you know, get at me, innit? But... I saw something. With, um, it just, it threw me. Because obviously, as I said, he's Luther, yeah? And I'm watching it and I'm like, yo, what advert is this? And at the, bottom, at the end, it come up Squarespace. I was like, yo, this is content management system. It threw me because WordPress is so big. Then you have things like Sitecore, you have things like Salesforce. Mm-hmm. Then you have things like Joomla and all yeah. the random names yeah. and stuff like that. Squarespace is very much like, I want to say WordPress's rival, mm-hmm. but WordPress is Coke. 
Squarespace is new. It's like Pepsi. Do you know why I'm not surprised? I was listening to, do you know how I built this? No. There's a guy called Guy Raz. So what he does, he sits down with innovators, founders, CEOs, whatever. Mm. And then they just discuss their story in it. And then they were talking to a guy from Lyft. I think he was the founder of Lyft. Mm. And then they were talking about, see Lyft coming up, rivaling with Uber. And then they were talking about Squarespace. I think it was Lyft. But anyway, they were talking about how Squarespace actually... It's a, that's a good example. WordPress is like Uber. And, and Lyft is like yeah. Squarespace. Yeah, yeah, you can put it like that. But Squarespace were the first people to sort of like market themselves on podcasts. And then they yes. just eventually I agree scaled. With that. Just, I, I 100% agree with that. Just scaled with that. So getting someone like Idris Elba isn't... isn't I don't think it's as surprising to me. No, but I feel like because it's a very simple advert, he's like sitting in the street. I think he's talking to himself. It's not, it's not a dramatic advert in the sense of it's not showing his. What skills. did he? What it's, did he do? What did he say? He literally like sitting in the street, and then he basically just starts saying random stuff, and then it relates to Squarespace in some way. But it's not like I know what Squarespace is, so me knowing what it is, it didn't make sense using him. Okay. And then when you think of technology and you think of adverts, you think of stuff like Samsung and Apple where it's all sleek, there's cuts. And if there's not cuts, it all moves very slow, but it's clear, it's bright, it's not dark and all of those type of things. It was very much the opposite of that type of advert. Mm. So it threw me a little, but maybe that's just because these companies have kind of created the normacy of what it is that you expect. For me, it sounds like a type of marketing situation. Tool. Just a... Brand awareness. Oh, I, I know who that is. That's Idris Elba. What's he talking yeah. about? Oh, he's doing that. Squarespace. Ah, right, cool bit. I'm going to go check that out. That's, that's what it probably like what it is. That's what You're probably like right. Me. You're probably right. But yeah, I, I ain't seen that film. I don't really plan on watching it either, to be fair. I'm not big on his music, mm. but let's let's move away because I'm a big fan of Idris. I've seen him around N2 two, two times. Like, Trust, big up him. Just before we move on from football, big up Ajax. Yes. Delic, De Jong, Neres, Saj. Semi-finals. Van der Beek, Tadic. Big boys, bad they boys. Come. Eric Ten Hag. Who they gonna play Liverpool? I feel sorry for them. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, yeah, they are. If they beat Porto, of course. If again. they play Tottenham, they would win. Or Man City. I think they would beat Man. Is it just me? I don't. I don't see Barcelona as a contender for the Champions League. I don't, no, they win. I feel like they're gonna go on next round. You're bugging against Liverpool. Whoever they play. So if they play Man City, they'll lose. <laughs> I think so. I think I think every team left right now can beat Barcelona. You know they you know they played against each other, innit? And they lost. I think Spurs can beat Do you Barcelona. remember that? I think Spurs can but beat Barcelona. Do you remember when Man City yeah. played Barcelona? Cool. Do you remember when Arsenal played Barcelona? Do you remember when Man United played Barcelona? Do you remember how all three of those teams underestimated Barcelona? Cool. Barcelona is like no punk. I know they're not they punks. Ain't no punk. They just beat you three, no? Yeah, because we're punks. They ain't no punks. I told you that when you go back to Barcelona, it's going to be a problem. <laughs> and look what happened. Uh, if you if you pause that way it freeze nah let's just keep going fam. I just got to toilet I can't lie I got, you got to hold it and we got better to go through I can't lie I can't lie we're almost done <laughs> alright cool let's move on let's talk about some TV what do you want to speak about in TV relations um oh wait let's discuss this thing um Basically, yeah, I watched this guy. I don't know if you know him. I think his name is Kilo Kane or Khan. And um, he was basically in Girlfriends. I don't know who he was in Girlfriends. Because I'm not going to lie to you. I watched Girlfriends when it came out. I used to watch it on Travel. I don't know if you... I watched a bit of it today when I saw it. Is it? Never watched it. You've never watched Girlfriends? Never. What, with um, yeah. Ellis, yeah, Ellis ne- Tracy Ross? Never watched it. Tracy Ellis Ross, my bad. For real? Never watched it. Did you watch Eve? Yeah. Okay, they used to come on the same channel still. Yeah, Girlfriends used to come yeah, on at night Yeah, I saw it, but I never watched it. I used to watch Girlfriends still. It was good. And the things that they address, like the storylines, because all of the main characters were women. There were mm. like four characters, all main, all of them women. Tracy Ellis Ross was the main character. Yeah. All of them things there. They had relationships. They had businesses. It was kind of like Eve. Mm-hmm. But Eve was the main character. So like, imagine four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And... It it addressed things from a woman's point of view and how they would respond and how difficult it is for them to kind of navigate the world in certain scenarios. Mm-hmm. So what Khalil Kane brought 
spoke about it was that whilst he was doing the show, it never occurred to him how much of a kind of how good the writing was and how sorry, how much how effective something like this could be in the sense of helping people and kind of help people as in young black girls and just women in general, how it's like you can gain a confidence and uh almost I don't even I don't want to speak from what they can gain, but in a sense of when let's I can say it from a guy's point of view, when you visually see something it almost seems relatable and it seems like if you're not doing it, you're capable and it kind of gives you ambition reassurance. and reassurance and you you understand where I'm coming yeah, from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when I heard that, I started thinking about girlfriends and I started thinking about how many shows are on TV now that kind of resemble or give off the same messages and I f- there aren't that many. Mm-hmm. There's probably around the same amount there was in that kind of decade of where my life and kids and one of us and not one of us, one on one and you're one on one. And all, one. all of them shows there used to come on. And yeah, I, I feel like there should be more. But it's like, I don't know, it, it gave me a feeling of how much have times in TV changed. I. And that that was strange for me because you get all of these things like Black Hollywood and the progression and everything has kind of uh, evolved through the times. So things aren't the same and that's how they will kind of address it. But I don't know. And obviously we're not in America, so I can't make any assumptions, but yeah. just the vibe and the information I've gotten and obviously the shows that are out there, I don't see any like that. And obviously, there is Insecure, but I don't watch Insecure, I'll be honest. So I can't vouch on how good it is. And then there is, um, I think there's another show called Dare White People. Yeah, apparently that's good. I've heard that's good, but I haven't watched that. Because it reminds me of Insecure a bit, Mm -hmm. from what I saw. So I was like, I don't want to watch the same show twice, even though I haven't watched the latter. And yeah, I've got two questions for you. So one, would you define those, those things as sitcoms? They're TV shows, yeah. Two, um... Are you talking about the message they're trying to show, or are you just are you generalizing the message? So, like, good message in general. Um, I mean, in the sense of like, you're providing something that's entertaining, but it's also relatable. What was the word that you used? Reassurance. Reassuring in the sense of you can do certain things. So it's like they, they made blackish, then they made grownish because they saw that there was a market for it. Right, I see. Do you got what I mean? Yeah. So. Even though potentially it's a good thing mm-hmm. that you done it to make money and how good is it? Like, are you being lazy? I haven't watched grown yeah, yeah. but I don't feel like it's for me because we're kind of past that age range. Going back to your point, though, where you, where you said about there isn't much on television. I don't I've... think there's a lot emulating those type of things because those things were so big to us. Like, one-on-one was about a man who raised his daughter on mm-hmm. his own. So that's the whole different thing, like, that whole show platform is good. Yeah. Because then you get the brother coming, you know, rub your fingers with them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then you get my wife and kids where it's like a traditional family. Yeah, yeah. But it's a black family and they're business owners and the woman's going to, Jay's going to university and all of these things there. Junior's having kids. So it's like, it's relatable because Nika's, the first child always has that one kid. And do you know what I'm saying? So we all related to that. We had Fresh Prince, we had Girlfriends, we had Eve. Like we had shows that kind of, they were like things or people or stuff that we've seen or resemble in life mm. or stuff that people would achieve to have because like Eve had her own salon in Eve or something. Yeah, yeah, it? yeah, yeah. So it's, it's very much, it was progressive in a certain way. And now, I don't know, it's very much like um, stereotypical black shows. Uh, okay. I don't know if that sounds right, but it sounds, do you understand what I mean? I feel like, um, and it's interesting you, that you brought that up. It's, because, um, it's like they've stereotyped what a black show would be. Yeah, so... For me, it sounds like the right people are not doing it. And then I was listening to the Joe Rogan podcast and he had Andrew Schultz on it. Mm. And then he said that sitcom is dead. And I actually have a clip that I wanted to play. Okay. Yeah. Just yet. Well, there's less opportunity. That's, that's it. You know, what happened in LA... But the um, sitcom is, thing, bro, you're fucking... Yeah. Dude, it is so done 
This they is how you know it. it's. You, you know how I know it's done. What is your favorite scene in a sitcom, or, or what top five scene? Just a scene you loved in a sitcom. Even though I was in a sitcom for five years, yeah. I don't really watch them. Sure. Okay. Fair enough. Well, I watch Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. Oh, yeah. That's a single camera. That doesn't. It's count, a little right? different because there's like no audience. audience. But like, here, but, anybody's listening right now, right? Like, you can think of one of your favorite scenes, right? Try to think of how that episode began. You don't know. Try to yeah. think about how it ended. You don't. You know. don't know. Right. Because right. the narrative so was never the important. Beginning. The narrative was to fill 30 minutes of time. The mm. only thing that was important were the five sketches that I filled that like 30 minutes of time. 22 minutes. Or 20, 22, yeah, well, exactly. <laughs> so so it's like those yeah. five that sketches said, don't exactly. have to have that bullshit narrative, right? Right. So right now, you really just need four or five friends that are doing the same kind of funny shit. We're already seeing the new sitcom right now. It's already existing well, on Instagram. It's just a not a good art I form. I agree with that. You know? I agree with what everything he said prior to that. I feel, I feel like, uh, Sorry, I feel like the new the new um, sitcoms are on Instagram, just short clips. I'm not on Instagram like that, yeah. so I can't vouch. Fair. However, from what I understand a sitcom to be, I wouldn't say that. However, I would say that what he said about remembering the beginning of the beginning of an episode mm -hmm. and the end of an episode, I 100% agree with. Same. Um, it being a load of jokes, just kind of spread out. In the thirty-minute segment, mm -hmm, yeah. I agree with because some of the things that you remember from Blackish is stuff that uh, Dion Cole has said, and Dion Cole he helps write Blackish and all of those type of things there. So it would make sense that he has some of the funniest scenes, and they improvised a lot and stuff like that. So I agree with what he said in a general state. The ending part, I don't know, but obviously you can vouch that. And I don't know. It it's interesting because obviously at the beginning it sounded similar to what I said. Yeah. But he went more in depth and explained it better than I did. Because I felt like me saying that they stereotype what they believe or what a black show is, is, I don't know, it sounds wrong. And it's not, ac it's not an accurate description on what it is that is happening. Yeah. So yeah. I feel like he better described what it is I was trying to say. For me, it's an art for a minute. If you want to do it correctly... And the platform isn't there anymore. If TV isn't it anymore, you could go do a different I don't way. think that TV isn't it anymore because people go to TV for the right thing. Game of Thrones is a testament to that. But Game of Thrones is, is outstanding. I, I saw something about Insecure not coming out till 2020. Why? I don't know. But if I had to assume... Do you know what the issue is as well? And they won't want to address it, but the shows should um, attack creating shows from a, like an individual, like an indie point. Because a lot of the way that people make the way, a lot of the way that people are viewing your shows nowadays is online. And obviously, I'm not trying to be the whistleblower and fuck everyone up, <laughs> but everyone watches TV shows online, in it, so they don't get the viewership or the numbers or the statistics to know how well a show is doing. Yeah. Like, so you can't accurately tell what's a good show and what's not all the time. So the kind of the quality has changed, the depth of a TV show, what it is that goes into making the quote-unquote sitcom and all of those things. It even comes down to, like, um, everyone was discussing why it is that uh, Marlon Wayne's Damon Wayne, sorry, yeah, left the Lethal Weapon sitcom, the TV show. You ever watched that? And apparently he left because it just wasn't right. It wasn't the right vibe. The show just didn't, it didn't, over time it didn't form out right. It just didn't feel right. And he left like halfway through the season because I was watching it and it was good because the guy that they had playing his partner, he got too into the role and they fired him. Like he was right. too into it. For real? Yeah. But he was really, really, really good. Like what he, was he? He played Riggs and Riggs is like the crazy detective. <laughs> yeah. So he done that role so well. And apparently after they said cut, nigga wasn't cutting type shit. <laughs> So Stop. that created a problem yeah. and they fired him and then they replaced him from, with Stifler from right, American okay. Pie. And he, he was a different character. He didn't play the same character, but he was good. Mm. But then Damon left. And now you can't replace Damon. He'd been the first two seasons. You can't, you can't yeah. say it. So they, I think they just ended the show. What are your, um, recently, your favourite sitcoms of recent? What's the time period? Let's say post university. Oh wow, I've watched so many TV shows. So it's 2016 onwards. Can I? Do you mean the year they came out? 
Yeah, let's, so let's any see show it. that came out after. We... Yes, seasons are included. So if a season three came, well, out... I watched The Sopranos after we finished uni. Okay. So and that's one of the best TV shows I've ever seen. So I don't want to sitcom. Tell you sitcoms. Off. Well, the sitcom is a TV show. So that's it. You mean thirty episodes, thirty thing, thirty yeah, thirty minute episodes. Yeah. So yeah. like a Brooklyn Nine Nine. Okay, I hear what you're saying. Well, Brooklyn Nine Nine will be up there. Definitely, I've got because they sing that in sync song at the beginning. Mm-hmm. That's one show that I don't feel like fits that formula. That's what. That's why I feel like it's strange. It's hard to kind of. It it kind of his Andrew's statement mm-hmm. kind of only classifies towards quote unquote black shows, in a strange way in Hollywood because Brooklyn Nine Nine even though it got cancelled, oh, it's fire. Someone mm-hmm. picked it up straight away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? I think it was CBS that cancelled it and someone else just bought it. They were like, yo, let's do the next season. This show is fire. Do you get what I'm saying? So, I don't know. Um, I like Young Sheldon. Okay. But I'm I've not a dramatic one. It. It's good. So. I've never watched that. I wanted to watch it. Um, I like his meme master. His meme master is funny. She's like normal Mima. people. <laughs> uh, oh, you actually got to see her? Yeah. Actually, they I've recast everyone, yeah, I've seen it? No, but they recast everyone. Okay. Because he's younger. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, TV shows. Okay, I know. But that's not, it's not a sitcom. This is what I'm saying. For me, yeah, it's about complexity. So I watch things like this show called The Good Doctor. And The Good Doctor was made by the person that makes House. And House was about Hugh Laurie. It wasn't about him. Hugh, Hugh Laurie played House. And it's about a di- diagnostician. So a doctor who diagnoses patients. And he would have a team and stuff like that. And then the good doctor's about autistic doctor that wants to become a surgeon. Right. I watch stuff. Yeah, so it's like my things are... The shows I'm into, you already know. Like, I told you to watch Ball. I told you to watch Elementary. It's about Sherlock Holmes. Like, mm. the things... They have a complexity. Sitcoms are for, like... They make me laugh, but they're not entertaining. Yeah. And it's kind of like how Andrew described it. It's jokes in the middle. And it has a somewhat storyline. I hear you. I mean... So I find it hard to kind of name some... I've got three. I've got Brooklyn Nine-Nine, of course. Insecure. Insecure fits that argument of Andrews. Then I've got Silicon Valley. Now... Would that be a sitcom? Mm. I would say so. You could you, you could probably fit in there. I don't know, man. You could probably fit in there. I don't... I think the story matters in Sil- Silicon Valley. See, this is the thing. It doesn't align with what... What, what said. Andrew said, yeah. yes. But I still think it's a sitcom. And it's... If you take out the storyline part, what yeah. Andrew said, then yeah, it would be a sitcom. Yeah. But it's very, it's complex in some ways. Yeah, 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 yeah. But they, they make it playful. Um, I heard that it's similar to a show that is called like Superior Donuts or something. Never heard of it. It's about a donut shop or something. But um, yeah, like, I don't know. Like one show I would say that is a sitcom that I definitely watch. So I would say Brooklyn Nine-Nine. I think another one is Blackish. Mm-hmm. I've been a loyal fan to Blackish because it entertains me. It's just funny. I like. I enjoy watching because it, it makes me laugh. I'll be completely honest. And yeah, uh, there's another show. Oh yes, I know another sitcom. It's called Neighborhood. Where's that on? Are you for? Nah, obviously, man's not trying to hot up the block in it. <laughs> but there's a show called The Neighborhood. Yeah, it's um, Cedric the Entertainer. Um. It's the mum from Everybody Hates Chris. Okay. And then they have two sons, but they're, uh, their sons are older. They're, they're big people. And then they get new white neighbours that move in next door. And it's the posh girl from Two Broke Girls. Ooh. And Schmidt from New Girl. Damn. And they have a little son called Grover. Is this new? Yeah. And it's a white family living in a black neighbourhood. And Cedric the Entertainer is their neighbour. It's great. It makes me bust up still. Neighbourhood, yeah. So normal. So I would say those three are probably like my go to. But any off anything other than that, it's like it's a storyline based T V show. So it's like I'd watch um Legacies, which is based off it's like a spin off of the Vampire Diaries and the originals, The Good Doctor, Ball Elementary, mm. New Amsterdam. New yeah, Amsterdam's good. Yeah, like I I like to watch things with substance that invoke emotion, I'll be honest with you. Or there's no point. I hate you. With me, obviously, when I have, I only watch things when I have, you know, some spare time. I hear that. So, I don't really like to beat my emotions too tough. I like Silicon Valley, but I think it's because I actually... It's interesting. Yeah. I learned a lot of things from that as well. Mm-hmm. So, that was interesting. But, yeah, let's move on to um, let's move on to technology. There was something that I wanted to 
um, sh- yes, yeah, shine some light on. Um, I see it everywhere in the news, isn't it? I've been hearing it in conversation. Um, Article thirteen, and how it would have an effect on everyday users like ourselves. So I'm gonna get. Is this the it. thing about how certain companies have to? Yeah, I'll get into it. Okay. So. Um, Article 13, so it's a small part of a wider directive called the Directive on Copyright in the Digital Single Market or the EU Copyright Directive, whatever you want to name it. And the mission is to make the marketplace a level playing ground between content creators such as ourselves and hosting platforms, so like... SoundCloud, Spotify, Facebook, um, YouTube. To go into further depth... Article 13 is a motion that will force platforms such as YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, etc. to be legally responsible for any copyright content that they host. So the content includes stuff like text, audio, images. Do you say that they would be responsible? That's right. So they don't become the issues of the content creator. They become the issues of the platform that allowed the content creator to use them. So just to put it into, into, into context. So if I upload something that's copyright to you you will sue youtube instead of suing me so when youtube see you no you will sue youtube if but it, won't youtube sue you now i'll, I'll go into further depth so basically okay. the way it's done is that um platforms can agree on licensing to post content on their platform so like you see how youtube have licenses with like sony and stuff to post music videos and shit on yeah. there and if they don't have license, they have to do everything in the power to make sure it doesn't go online. So they do that already. I'll be honest. Yeah. So you. they've they've got this thing called content. Um, they, do you know who they do it a lot with? Who? They're the people that make um, anime and manga videos and like Game of Thrones and stuff. Yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, definitely for them. Yeah. They take down all of their stuff. They get notices from the people that make the mangas and animes, telling them you can't use our art in your video. And I'm like, yo. This person got 30,000 people to watch a video on My Hair Academia. You think they didn't go watch My Hair Academia after this? <laughs> You're bugging. Yeah, it's true. It's, it is a marketing tool as well. But, um, so there's a, there's a lot of discussion about this. Um, so there was, an, there was an initial movement a couple of years ago, mm. but they sort of like, so they sort of like went back. So like they went back and forth with like YouTube and stuff just to sort of like come to an agreement where we they can sort of find like a middle ground. And... Um, I think they've they've come to a conclusion where um basically they need to create some sort of like a tool that basically sorts through it's basically like an upload filter. So say for instance you upload something, the algorithm sort of like breaks it down into different things and then it, it sort of compares it with a pool of copyrighted work to see if there's any matches. And YouTube actually, no, I think I understand because YouTube do something where yeah. if you upload it, they run and listen to the whole video and then they pick out the minutes that they have music mm-hmm. or audio mm-hmm. and then they tell you that you've copyrighted it and you can erase it yeah. and re-upload or they can try to erase the sound for you. Yeah. So, so that's actually called... mechanisms to try to fix it. I think that's called a copyright ID system or something like that. But the only thing is it isn't completely thorough. No, it's not at all. Yeah. and Because I done it and I tried to delete it through their system and then it took like 10 hours... I lied to like two hours, but <laughs> when I went back to it, it never deleted. Yeah. So I had to delete it myself. There's a couple of examples actually. So like in 2016, um, YouTube took, took down a video by a Harvard professor because it contained snippets of a Jimi Hendrix song. And even though it was made purely for like educational purposes. The maddest thing is, yeah, it was you know that's the down. reason why um, that girl shot up YouTube. Who's that girl? Do you know, I remember we spoke about it on Channel 9 podcast. I like the, um, I think she was Middle Eastern, but I don't want people to make assumptions because she wasn't that type of woman from the research I'd done. She just made videos about the current states of what's happening in the world. Oh, right. And YouTube started altering and taking down her videos. She got angry. Her family told the police and they asked the police to go check on her. They didn't. Then the next day she went up to YouTube and she shot up YouTube. Do you not remember this? Shut up, YouTube. Yeah. Oh, right. Yes, I do remember. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because they were altering her videos yeah. and changing her message. I remember that. And uh, December last year, um, when Tumblr brought the porn ban to effect. Uh, yeah, Tumblr is ridden with porn. It's disgusting. But... The the system blocked images of topless women protesting. And even even though it was said that that type of nudity was accepted, it's still... It's lied, though, because they haven't fixed it. If you go on Tumblr right yeah. now, I'm telling you, 
So it's nasty, fam. Given those examples, you can tell like dip, um, developing and implementing these types of filters. But to be fair, yeah, it's expensive and stuff, man. You know what's interesting? I don't think they can get rid of it on Tumblr because one of the most trending things on Tumblr all the time is like women in underwear or um, silhouettes or women in clothing. Mm. And you can't remove those things because Tumblr is a blogging and photo-based system. So if you're gonna if you're gonna put parameters on what you consider art or creativity, mm-hmm. then your platform no longer supplies the uh, the the kind of um, service that you claim yeah. to. Or you or your filters needs to be immaculate. No, because people are over the age of eighteen, so it's like you can't tell someone on Tumblr, ah, oh, you can't post this photo of that girl in the underwear, even though she's not naked. No, no, no. They said it's accepted. They said that top that type of nudity is accepted. So what's not accepted? Complete nudity. Porn. I'm confused. So I'm assuming. Are they saying there's porn videos? On there's porn videos. So oh, that's nasty. So still. the the band. I thought they were just talking about the no, images. No, 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 no. The algorithm clots it, that as porn because the algorithm is, isn't thorough. But this is what I'm saying. It clots the images as porn. Yeah. Okay, now. Yeah. But you're saying that they're trying to recreate it so it doesn't. Yeah. I see. So that's why my Tumblr comes up as it's private like that. So you've seen it because you tried to drop yeah. yeah. So it's 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 a very expensive process that they need to go through. Yeah, they need to fix that because Tumblr is a great platform. Mm-hmm. So like given given all of the information that I, I brought in that sorry that I brought in that that I spoke about and me doing research, like it really gave me the feel that it seems like it's a battle between like the EU and Silicon Valley. And um, <laughs> because I saw a tweet, yeah, that I'm going to read. I said it's a battle between the EU and Silicon Valley, you know. Let me let me get this tweet up. Isn't this a kind of a worldwide implication? Yep. Yep. So there's a guy called Guy... Richie? No, Guy Verhofstadt. So he's a um, US, um, US EU member parliament, yeah. And he tweeted, in Europe... We create more content than in the US, mostly used on American platforms. That's mad, I didn't know that. Yeah, but Europe is bigger than America. Yeah. So that's logical. We urgently need a European model in which creators get their fair share and citizens control their own data. So it sounds like they're really trying to sort of battle the Silicon Valley's companies, so like YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. No, do you know what I think it is? What they're trying to do, yes, I think they're trying to low key implement a system that allows them a backdoor into the the information that they gather. Because I think the way the issue arose is that it's not about content as in the sense of privacy or um, age appropriation and stuff like that. It's about control. It's about, yes. So what I think happened is that because Tumblr and Twitter and Facebook and all of these, Google, all of these places have... um, information about us from what we like advertisements our amount of time we spend on all of these websites mm. and our kind of integration yeah yeah into technology they have looks into our lives so amazon so think about it. if you have someone's twitter you know how they think you have amazon you know what they buy yeah you have i don't know several other apps you know what they love mm. music you know what they listen like you have a, a almost um a profile of a person. Mm. So you can start to calculate things off of this or what would work in the future, what won't work in the future because you can see the trend mm. and what's happening. And then if everyone does this, it creates like a worldwide kind of data sheet. Yeah. So you'll be able to trend what's going to, you'll be able to calculate what is trending and what will happen and what may happen. Yeah. So it's a whole like, it's almost like predictive analytics. It's yeah, quite yeah, strange. yeah, 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 yeah. So I feel like they don't like the way that, um, let's say, quote unquote, Silicon Valley is utilizing this and it's quite corruptive. Yeah. So I think that they're trying to not stop it, but just kind of get a foot mm. in it. But either way, that's that's going to have a major effect on like all the small players, like content, content creators, like ourselves. Yes. In, yes. In regards to... But I think it, it's a situation where you kind of have to refine your content more. So you have to kind of become more professional about mm. it in a way. Because a lot of content creators are creative. So that whole legality or um, kind of structure to the work isn't always there. Mm-hmm. And then that's where some of the kind of issues arise. Yeah. And I also heard that it has... that. Memes are going to be affected by this. Memes, and I, yeah, and I yeah, read. I could see that. I read something, but I'd be vexed if I was Michael Jordan and someone made that crime <laughs> meme with me. I would want all the guap for that meme. Hey, 
And I heard the memes are actually safe. Fam, that meme is just as hard as the Air Jordan logo. That's how well known it is. Yeah, you ain't eating from that. Yeah. <laughs> it's peak. So yeah, I just wanted to sort of like shine light on that just to, just to make sure people are aware where the internet is actually going. It's interesting that you brought up the social media subject though because last thing, just to, because this is something that just popped up yeah. on me yesterday. Actually, it wasn't yesterday. It was when I was going to the hospital. I was on the bus and this guy got in front of me and he sat directly in front of me and he took out his phone and the whole time I was on the bus in front of him, I was watching him on his phone whilst I was listening to music and his rotation between Instagram, Twitter, WhatsApp... <laughs> Yeah, was mad. <laughs> he would go on Twitter for two seconds, scroll, 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 press the button, then press the home button, go to Instagram, scroll, 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 check one second of someone's local story, mm. come off, go onto Instagram, look at photos on Instagram, no on Instagram, on WhatsApp, so someone sent them messages, there was a photo, looked at the photo, held the thing, replied to the photo, then stayed, looked at the phone, read it for like two seconds, closed the app, went back into Twitter, click, 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 I was like, fam, you're not doing anything called substance. I wanted to slap the phone out of his hand. I was like, bro, this is what people do in social media. And I literally wrote down a whole paragraph about it on my phone. I was like, I don't use my phone like that. And obviously, me and you, we have the discussion all the time. You tell me I can't think, I can't make the assumption people think the same way I think. Mm -hmm. So I, I started to go to myself and I was just like, is this what people do on their phone? And I'm looking around, I'm like, yo, this is not what people do. But I'm like, this looks so normal. He looks like this is the thing that you do. Mm. And it just made me think, yo, this is his life. Another thing that Andrew said when, um, I think this was an episode on Brilliant Idiots, when Wayne was on there, they were speaking about how, he was like, do you think like in like, let's say 50 years or so, we look back on phones the way we look at tobacco now? Like, he 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 made a statement. Oh, you you you. you they said that tobacco never gave you cancer. Yeah, I hundred percent believe phones give you cancer. The radiation could not not give you cancer. Yeah. It's a lie. I'm gonna talk about five G next week. Still, I'm gonna put that out there. Um, but I don't know. It's interesting that you say that. Um, I don't know. Tobacco to me, I feel like people are always aware of the effects of tobacco. It's one of those things that uh, the feeling at the time outweighed the feeling of the future. Mm -hmm. And it's like that today. You can put boxes of a nigger with half a mouth and their lungs are black, but yo, where's my cigarettes? You know, like that. <laughs> Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, it would. So at the end of the day, people make traces in it. Mm -hmm. And traces have to be made, innit? So I would just say minimize the activity on your phones. Check your screen time. And I would just... say when it comes to the phones, it it may not even be a time thing. It might be a usage thing in the sense of um, what are you using it for? Are you yeah. using your phone to use your phone or are you using your phone because you need to use your phone? Mm -hmm. And that's what I would say is one of the probably differences is because you know me, I'll misplace my phone and I just had it. And yeah. then I'll go do something for about half an hour, hour, and I'll yeah. be like, yo, someone called me. And I find myself thankful that I'm like that because, to be completely honest, majority of what I use my phone for is to listen to music or share content with mm -hmm. people that I need to share content with. Yeah. Other than that, it's probably my laptop or pen and pad. Mm. I feel like I'll constantly live in like a conflicted life. I run my business in my phone, but I don't want to be on my phone. But I just have to be on it for a certain time. I have to reply to certain messages. It's long. I hate it sometimes. Is you need a home of operations. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely do. But yeah, just quickly before we round up, um, PlayStation have released a couple things. Apparently PlayStation 5 is coming out. I told all of you. Remember I told you about three months ago that you need to save. Remember yeah, I said yeah, that Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so they've they've released a couple things that it's that they're gonna it's upgrade. They on. never went to E3, I knew it was coming yeah. out. So just just quickly, we're going to talk about this in, f in more depth in another podcast when they release more information. But they said uh, there's going to be a much more much faster loading time. Mm. So the console will include a high speed solid disk hard drive, so SSD. Mm. How big is it? How um, much memory? Not sure. Not sure. They have they haven't actually spoke about any any um, specs. specs here. Okay. So improved audio. Have they changed the shape of it? They haven't spoken about shape either. Okay. But apparently, it might be bigger than the PS4. Okay. Um, enhanced 
visual experience. So oh, like VR, shit. yeah, VR. And so the guy, I had the screens going to be better than 4K as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. I saw that as well. But um, there was another thing that I saw. Um, so someone tweeted. I'm not too sure who this guy is, but he wrote he wrote an article that I read, and then he he might have just been in that presentation, so he might have wrote notes. But they said, given the speculation on um, the, it's going to be bigger, isn't that? The, the memory size is going to be bigger with mm. the hard drive and stuff. Because the games become more, yeah. the graphics cards have increased, so yeah. the games become more memory. So the things, the memory increases, the mm. default memory increases. They reassured that the price will be like... £500. It will be within our reach for games so and stuff. It will be £500. Which isn't too bad. I'll pay five bucks for PS5. So they, yeah, I know it will be five hundred pounds. Why? Because the last one cost like three fifty. Yeah, to be fair, you wasn't. They, they, they said within a range. The maximum right? price. Will, okay, let me take that back. The maximum price will be five hundred pounds. And where I gather this is that an iPhone is a grand now, right? Mm. They're not stupid enough to do what Apple done because they know we're not paying a grand for a console. That's real talk. But they know that we will pay between three fifty to five hundred pounds. That's facts. I agree with that. And they know that they have to keep games at a maximum of fifty pounds. Mm. If they're on PSN, you can make them 60 or 70. And they're keeping this because all this this feature. Oh, well, you can take this from PS4. I don't know, maybe. Because you know what's so good about Xbox One? You can play You can play all the Xbox games on the Xbox yeah. One. So niggas are taking Modern Warfare 2 and putting in their Xbox 360. On the Xbox One, mm. I'm playing it. I'm like, yo, why ain't PS? And that's a PlayStation game. Yeah. So I was just like, yo, that doesn't even make sense. But when I was thinking about it, there isn't many features that I would like to... Um, I want the Apple collab. See, so do I. But are you Spotify now? I still want the Apple collab. I can connect my phone. I can have AirPlay from my PlayStation. Oh, like that, like mad. that. I can connect my laptop to my PlayStation to make my come off my yeah. TV screen. I think Apple will, will look into doing that. Hopefully. But yeah, man. I'm all done. Okay. Um. All right. Uh, There was one more thing that popped into my head, but I forget. I maybe I remember now. So, obviously, we didn't... Or well, AJ didn't explain what the Channel 9 podcast is oh, yeah. right now. <laughs> um, so I don't know if you want to do that or should I just go for it? You can go for it, to be fair. I'm bossing, I need to cook. All uh, right. So the Channel 9 podcast is um, is a platform that we will discuss particular topics and bring in guests and discuss what it is that they do and what their artistry or creative outlet or business is. So that is what the Channel 9 podcast has become. The Ninth House has become a platform to which members of Summer Night and extended members of Summer Night may come and discuss things in the same setting that you experience today. So it's something similar. Um, all playlists will be extensions of the Ninth House, no longer Channel 9 podcast. And the Channel 9 podcast will also feature articles an audio podcast and in the future videos so watch out for that and you know we will let you know when new episodes are rising and new guests are coming to the show thank you for listening to night house this is episode two on route to change and you've been talking and listening to matt karoshi and aj dotty and we'll see you next week <laughs>